Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of the Zechariah commentary. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 1. I lifted up mine eyes again and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Now, the reason you would put a, me a measuring line in your hand is because you're, you're building something. I mean, that's a carpentry type term. You want to build a wall straight, you lay a line and you follow it. Verse 2. Then said I, Whither thou go uh, whither goest thou? In other words, where where are you going? And he said unto me, To measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth thereof and what is the length thereof. And behold, the angel that talked with me went forth, and another angel went out to meet him, and said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls, for the multitude of men and cattle therein. Now why did they build walls? Well, you wanted to keep the dangerous wild animals out, you know, like bears and lions. But also, you wanted to keep the dangerous two-legged animals out. Armies of the heathens, right? Now listen to this. Verse 5. For I, saith the Lord, for I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. So God's going to be a wall of fire and he is going to be the glory in the midst of her, which means in the middle. So where have we seen that? Now, remember, reading what the Lord did in the past with certain word phrases is a very strong indication of what he plans to do in the future. Now, let's take a look at Exodus chapter 14. Uh, there was the plagues of Egypt, the first Passover, and that very much mimics the plagues in the end time in the book of Revelation. But uh, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the pillar of smoke and the wall of fire. So Israel left Egypt and the Egyptian army is pursuing them. Now you should know that Egypt was descendants of Ham. Uh, no, not Smithfield, but uh, Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham's son was Canaan, you know, the cursed one. Just so that you know that. All right, let's go to Exodus chapter 14 and verse 22. Israel's getting ready to cross the Red... Well, they're, they're crossing the Red Sea. And the Egyptian army is pursuing them. So, Exodus 14, 22. And the children of Israel went in the midst, into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And like I mentioned in the other study, they, uh, there are so-called Bible scholars that will tell you that the uh, children of Israel didn't cross the Red Sea that the King James and all the other Bibles, they're mistranslated. You know, they went through the Sea of Reeds, which is like ankle deep. You know, that's how they crossed the water. But like I've mentioned before, the real, the real miracle is how did uh, Pharaoh's army drown in ankle deep water? 
that's the real miracle, right? Yeah, Satan's got his um, wolves dressed as sheep everywhere. All right, so the children of Israel are crossing the Red Sea on dry ground. There's a wall of water to the right. There's a wall of water to the left. Verse 23. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. You know why the Egyptians didn't attack prior to this? Because there was a pillar of fire between the Egyptians and the Israelites. See, the pillar of fire gave light to Israel during the night. And it was gave them uh, a pillar of smoke during the day. And when the pillar moved, the children of Israel moved. They marched. They were an army. And when it stood still, they made camp. And when it moved, they broke camp. And it separated. The pillar of fire separated the Egyptians from Israel. So keep that in mind. So, the Lord looked through the pillar of fire and the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels. And they drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. Now remember something, people. These, these people, are uh, the soldiers are wearing armor. Armor's heavy. It doesn't float very well. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, there remained not so much as one of them. Huh. But the children of Israel walked upon dry ground in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Yeah, you idiots. It's got to show you all these different miracles before you finally believe. Boy. All right, so let's take a look at um, more fire. A wall of fire, right? In Zechariah, we read that in Zechariah 2, verse 5, he said, For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her, Jerusalem, a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. Huh. Now, where's that? Well, let's take a look. All right, I believe that Zechariah chapter 2, uh, that verse 5, is referring to the event after the thousand-year reign of Christ. Some people refer to this as millennium. Believe it or not, that's uh, uh, Millie is M I L L I, where you get the word millimeter, uh, a thousandth of a meter. It refers to a thousand. It's Latin. Um, so let's take a look at Revelation chapter 20, which talks about the thousand year reign of Christ. Now, I did a Bible study on that. What was the purpose of the thousand year reign of Christ? I believe it's the purpose, this is the short version, 
I believe it is so that all the children that died in childbirth, abortions, what have you, will be given a chance to grow up. Because uh, the Bible says that uh, in the resurrection, we are neither given a marriage, we neither marry nor are given a marriage. But yet the Bible talks about in the kingdom, there are children. So where do these children come from? Well, I, I think they're all the ones that died in childbirth or at a certain young age. They'll be given a body and be given a chance to grow up. But that's the Bob theory. And if you got a different idea, that's okay. But that's just me. All right, Revelation chapter 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Revelation 20, verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now this is just the introduction, people. But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Um, there, now, pre-tribbers will tell you that there's a resurrection before the first resurrection the, at the pre-trib rapture. But uh, I don't see it. I can't find it. Uh, maybe somebody else can show me because I can't find it. And I've been studying the Bible for 30 years. I don't claim to be a scholar, but hey. All right, so, verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Ah, what's the purpose of this? Well, I think all the children that died in childbirth, the abortions, what have you, you know, they're given a chance to grow up and be tried and tested. So, Satan's loosed out of his prison. What does he do? He goes out and deceives again, right? That's his job. Verse 8, And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Alright, so those that decide to follow Satan and those that decide to follow the Lord, right? Verse 9. And they, those that want to follow Satan, and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. Alright, so they, they basically, compassed means to surround. You know, a compass... 360 degrees, those of you that took geometry. So they compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, Jerusalem, and fire, fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Remember in Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 5? For I say that the Lord will be under her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. Well, here you go. Revelation 29, and they went up out on and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Huh. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. 
Now, I've heard people say that uh, people cast into hell are tortured forever and ever. I'm not sure, but uh, the devil, the beast, and the false prophet, now those, they do say, they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So, we may as well read the rest of the chapter. We're almost done, right? I don't want people accusing me of pulling verses out of context, Bob. You're a deceiver. That's what they tell me. Uh, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne. Oh, this is where you don't want to be. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no, more, uh, found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the dead, oh, I'm sorry, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Death and hell. Here's people that are hell being delivered up, and they're going to be judged. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to their works. So all these evil people, they're going to be judged according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Not good. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Huh. So, just remember, those that are in Christ, they are not going to be bothered by the second death. Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. There you go. Bingo. All right. So in Zechariah chapter 5, we read again. For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. All right. So how's that work? The glory. Well, what is this glory of the Lord? Now, some people in the so-called sacred name Hebrew Roots movement, uh, the chew, when your mouth's full of food, the chewdizers, uh, it's a word that starts with a J and rhymes with news, like the newspapers. Yeah. Uh, they'll tell you that it's the Shekinah, S-H-E, she kind of but when you and they'll say oh that's the glory of the lord well the, first of all that word does not appear in the bible anywhere not in the new testament not in the old testament it's not in the hebrew which is what the old testament was written in but not only that when you read it it comes from um the cob allah you know people that wear the red string madonna she's one of them um, it comes from that. Uh, the she, kind of, they'll tell you is the Holy Spirit and tell you that he is a she. I guess they want us to believe the Holy Spirit's a tranny. Yeah. And they say, that well, that's God's wife. Uh, God the Father's wife is the Holy Spirit, the she, kind of. And they got together. And that's how um, the Son of God was born. Yeah, that's their thinking. And it comes from magic and Satanism. But the New Testament clearly records that the Holy Spirit is referred to as He, sometimes as an it, you know, but as a He, not a she. Sorry. So what is all this glory stuff? Well, let's take a look. Ezekiel 10.4. 10.4, good buddy. Then the glory of the Lord 
went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness, the brightness of the Lord's glory. Ah, there we go. The brightness of the Lord's glory. Ezekiel 43, 2. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined, and the earth shined with his glory. Ah. Now here's an interesting verse. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 19. Now this is an end time verse. The sun shall be no more by light by day. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Huh. Sounds like end times. We're going to read about that in Revelation in a minute. Now, in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 14, uh, we're going to skip around a little bit because I don't want to make this a huge long study. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Uh, he's asking him, oh, What are these people? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes." All right, here's another interesting one. Revelation chapter 21, verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And like I say, um, some people will tell you that, well, you know, Jews is one bride and Gentiles is another. Uh, God's not a polygamist. He's got one bride. I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife, not wives, wife. Singular, not plural. And he carried me away in the spirit of a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. But wait a minute, the church teaches that we're just Gentiles, that we're not Israel. Where's the thirteenth gate? There's got to be a 13th Gentile gate. Oh, wait, there isn't one. Oh, man, what happened? So either if we are Gentiles saved by grace and we're not Israel, well, then guess what? You ain't getting in to holy New Jerusalem. But then again, I think we are. Galatians 3.29, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Abraham was the grandfather of Israel. There you go. I don't know. That's my opinion. All right, let's skip down to Revelation 21 and verse 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, no need for the sun, neither the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. 
John 8, 12, right? And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, and there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Very important that you're in the Lamb's book of life. Very important, right? All right, let's go to the next chapter. Uh, Revelation 22. Uh, let's see. All right, let's go to verse 1, I guess. Revelation chapter 22, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. What did, the, uh, what did Jesus tell the Samaritan woman at the well? Out of his belly would flow rivers of living water. Oh, yeah. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life. Huh. No tree of good and evil, but there's the tree of life. Which bare twelve manners, manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. I think I'd rather have his name in my forehead than the mark of the beast, but hey, that's just me. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Hmm. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. Boy, I just had a guy uh, telling me that Paul was a false apostle. And he said, This book of Revelation, oh, that's not true. Um, but the book of Revelation says, And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. Yeah, I had his uh, friend tell me that uh, you can't use the Bible to prove the Bible. Huh. Well, if you can't use the Bible to prove the Bible, what do you prove it with? Oh, that's right. Unbelieving satanic scholars. That's, that's, that's who they want to use. Never mind. They got blocked. Not on my channel. Go to, go to somebody else's channel. Maybe the Church of Satan has a channel you can go to. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Now remember, remember, this is written almost 2,000 years ago, but uh, in the book of Peter it says that uh, a, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. So, you know, shortly be done you know, a day or two to the Lord. To us, it's a thousand, couple thousand years, right? Verse 7. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. All right. I think I proved my point. Let's go to Zechariah. Verse 5 again. Chapter 2, verse 5. For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. Her who? Jerusalem. Verse 6. Ho, ho, come forth. No, this is not Santa Claus going ho, ho, ho. No, this is ho, ho, come forth, and flee from the land of the north. What land is north of Jerusalem? Europe, people. Europe. Europe. And flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. Wow. Now, 
guess what? Mystery Babylon the Great, right? Book of Revelation, the woman that rides the beast. Uh, I heard, I didn't watch the Super Bowl. I could care less. I used to love football. I don't anymore. But I saw something on something or other. Uh, some Christian channel showed some woman riding on top of a a beast, like a some huge type animal. Uh, I think it was made out of metal. I'm not sure. And uh, it, I believe it, they were trying to depict the woman riding the beast. I don't know. Um, so... Zechariah 2.7, Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, After the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. For many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people. And I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto thee. And the Lord shall inherit Judah his portion in the holy land, and shall choose Jerusalem again. Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. All right, this is the end of the commentary of Zechariah, Chaplain two, uh, Zechariah chapter 2. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In his precious name, amen.